So would you be able to tell us a little bit about what gene therapy is? Yeah, uh, gene therapy is basically the idea that you can introduce some DNA into somebody's body and the body will take in that DNA and it will use it to kind of treat or overcome some sort of condition that the person might be affected by. So I guess the obvious application of gene therapy might be for somebody who's got a genetic disease, so something like Huntington's disease or cystic fibrosis, but you can use it more broadly in other things as well, perhaps uh, cancer or even an infectious disease like HIV and AIDS. So how would it work specifically to cystic fibrosis, one of the applications that you were talking about? So for cystic fibrosis, um, people affected by cystic fibrosis have got a change in one of their genes, uh, and that change affects the cells in the lungs, uh, along with some other cells in the body as well. And the problem is that those cells have got a, the DNA in those cells wants to make a protein, uh, but because of the change in the DNA, the protein ends up being different to what it would usually be. Uh, and it doesn't work properly uh, and that's a problem for people with cystic fibrosis. So the idea with gene therapy for cystic fibrosis is that you would be able to introduce the kind of usual healthy version if you like of that gene into the cells that are affected uh, and that would produce the protein that's not working. But there are obviously various challenges to that unfortunately. Yeah that was my next question, what are the problems and challenges that you've come across while trying to do the gene therapy treatment? Although gene therapy sounds quite sort of simple in, in principle, um, actually cells kind of don't want, if you like, to have uh, unusual DNA in them. So even though all cells have got DNA in them, they're very sensitive to DNA that is not their own. They do know if it's come from elsewhere. Uh, and so cells will quite often, if there's new DNA introduced into them, they'll just try and get rid of it. You know, they won't use it at all. <clears throat> With cystic fibrosis, there are, a lot, there are challenges basically at every step. Um, the cells of the lung, so the surface area of the lung is enormous. I think it's about the size of a football yeah. pitch. Um, so actually being able to introduce enough DNA that can reach all of those different cells, you're just trying to think, trying to think about spreading a liquid over an area of a football pitch. That, that's quite big. Um, so being able to reach all of the cells is a, is a massive problem. Also, the cells are covered in mucus on the outside, where, where the DNA is likely to be approaching them from. Um, and so they've got to get through this sort of... Mucus is actually a really effective barrier, uh, um, uh, sort of stopping things getting to the cells. Uh, and so it's got to get through the mucus as well. Uh, and then once it's there, like I say, it needs to stay there and be, um, and be used for a long time. But the problem is that your body, about every 48 hours, replaces the cells that line the lungs. And so even if you do cure the cells, 48 hours later you've got a new batch of cells which have still got the changed bit of DNA in them and they haven't got the, the new bit of DNA which is kind of helping them act normally. So it's a challenging uh, condition to treat with gene therapy. Um, this one isn't on here, but um, what kind of things are you doing to try and overcome the challenges? Are there any ways that you've found that work? I think um, there are various kind of different approaches. So to get the cells into the, sorry, to get the DNA into the cells in the first place, uh, scientists use something called liposomes. Uh, and liposomes are essentially tiny little bubbles of fat. Uh, and the inside of that bubble is where you put the DNA. Yeah? And so you can modify the liposome to kind of give it special properties and to help it to get through the cell membrane and into the nucleus effectively and things like that. You can modify the DNA itself so that it can be used as best as possible by the cell. So those are kind of the, the main approaches um, for specifically for cystic fibrosis where they're trying to make it as effective as possible. Would it aim to be a cure for cystic fibrosis or would it just to be to treat the symptoms? I think it depends exactly what you mean by a cure I guess. Like, I think the idea of going into a clinic with cystic fibrosis, yeah. taking gene therapy and leaving without cystic fibrosis is, is probably un, is quite unlikely. But it's much more likely that you would go in, have a round of gene therapy which would um, be curative for a period of time, but then you would have to do that repeatedly. Yeah. What stage is gene therapy at at the moment? Well, it's kind of had a bit of a chequered history, gene therapy. I think um, 
every, when uh, they discovered what the, the change in the gene responsible for cystic fibrosis, or rather they discovered the gene um, behind cystic fibrosis, there was a lot of excitement. They sort of thought, well, well we, we know what the gene is, and therefore uh, we can, that's going to allow us to effectively cure it using this information. That was a big um, uh, sort of excitement in the field at the time. It's taken a long time, obviously, to, um, to move it forward. There is actually another disease that has been treated with gene therapy, um, which is called SCID. Um, and it's, well, X-SCID, actually. It's X-linked severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome. It's not a very catchy title, which I think is why they abbreviated it SCID. And um, they were able to... So basically, <clears throat> uh, it only occurs in, in boys, and those boys are born without a functional immune system. And <clears throat> your immune system is, is an incredible bit of machinery, and if it, without it, you'd be dead very, very quickly. So... Boys have got excavated are really very poorly when they're born and they have to be um, sort of kept isolated in, uh, in a bubble. They're called bubble boys. And so what they did with this is they, they actually extracted some of the bone marrow from, from the little boys who, who were affected uh, and they used a virus. Viruses are very good at getting DNA into cells. So they used a virus to um, replace the, the copy of the gene which um, was not working in those uh, affected children. <clears throat> and then uh, put the, the bone marrow back into them and uh, they actually completely cured the disease. But there were complications with it uh, and unfortunately uh, some of the children went on to develop uh, leukaemia um, as a result of the, the, the treatment. They did cure the leukaemia uh, and I think I'm right in saying that most of the children, uh, even though if they developed leukaemia, they still also had a, a functional immune system. Um, do you have any ideas when gene therapy would be ready to use? Specifically for cystic fibrosis, uh, there is currently a clinical trial in the UK um, going ahead for, for cystic fibrosis, um, which so that's obviously a good thing, yeah. but um, it's always uh, not, uh, well, for drug, for normal drugs, the actual uh, number of drugs that make it from the testing phase in which we're in a clinical trial to actually being used uh, and kind of approved by by the authorities and whatnot is, is very very small. Um, I think it's more likely that the current clinical trial that's going on now will inform the kind of next generation of uh, assisted fibrosis uh, gene therapy approaches. As I said earlier, cystic fibrosis is a really challenging disease to cure using gene therapy. There are other potentially more straightforward diseases that can be addressed with it. I think so it's possibly more likely that those other diseases might uh, be approached first and then the knowledge that scientists get from curing the other diseases might help to feed in to creating something more for, for cystic fibrosis. That doesn't really put, I don't give an answer to your question, but I, it's just almost impossible to put a number on that sort of thing. You, you never know what might be discovered tomorrow, but you, you're looking out of thought, you know, sort of uh, at least 10 years plus for anything with cystic fibrosis, but that's a bit of a standard scientist response, is always give us 10 years and see what happens type of thing. And um, I was going to ask, how do you think the treatment will be administered? I mean, I know you said that it would have to be topped up and redone. Mm. But how would it actually be uh, get into the body? Probably using something like a nebulizer. Um, so it would be uh, inhaled effectively in a sort of um, sort of like um, kind of like the steam that you get off uh, from a kettle boiling or something like that. You know, you'd be inhaling these little tiny uh, liposomes with the DNA inside them. If we're looking to cure a uh, condition using gene therapy, then um, if that condition is a genetic condition, so a person's uh, DNA, they've got a change in their DNA, which, which for whatever reason it is, is, is giving them um, problems. That change can kind of be, it can occur in a, in a few ways, not occur in a few ways, it can have a few different effects. So one thing, in, like in the case of cystic fibrosis, is that the, um, the protein doesn't work properly. So it's got a usual function that we would expect, a, a usual sort of task that it does, that we would expect it to be doing, and it's, and it's not able to do it. And by not doing it, that causes a problem for the cell. But you have different kinds of um, changes to the, to the proteins, and so in, actually in Huntington's disease, the change of the protein makes it toxic, poisonous. And so actually, eventually, uh, if you've got the, the mutation that gives you Huntington's disease, then over time, 
you all develop um, so much of this protein that the cells of your brain start to die. That's not the case in CF. Okay, so what's, what we've got in CF and cystic fibrosis is what's called a loss of function. Yeah, in Huntington's disease, it's called gain of function because it wouldn't normally be toxic, and yeah, so and it starts being toxic. Mm. It doesn't actually matter. So cystic fibrosis has got several different mutations um, that, that can uh, cause it. Um, the, there's sort of the main mutation, but there are other ones as well. It actually doesn't matter um, which mutation uh, an individual has. Um, they can always be cured using the same bit of, of DNA because effectively you're trying to restore uh, some uh, activity that is missing. And it doesn't matter why that activity is missing, kind of what the mutation was that caused that activity to be missing, so long as you're able to replace the activity. Um, so the liposomes and whatnot, because they can be the same, sorry, the DNA inside the liposomes can be the same for all cystic fibrosis um, patients. So it'd be a one treatment cures yep. all types? Yep. Right. How do they get into the, do they like, how do they get into the cell membrane? So what a liposome looks like is kind of, um, it's this funny sort of shape like this. And all of these little sort of lollipop shapes represent a fat molecule, okay? And in the middle of that fat molecule is your DNA. So it's a much smaller bit of DNA than it was uh, with, a, with a virus, and actually it's called a plasmid. I don't know if you've heard of the yeah, word plasmid yeah, yet. So, okay, cool. So plasmids are these little bits of DNA which are normally in bacteria, but it turns out that they're really useful and easy yeah. for scientists to use and manipulate. So uh, what a liposome does is you essentially just mix the plasmid DNA with these sort of lollipops, and the, the liposomes will form around the, the DNA. So you end up with the DNA in the middle and the fat, fatty liposome surrounding it. Because it's a fatty uh, substance, it will essentially just mix with the um, with the cell membrane, um, and therefore that allows it to, to get inside. Yeah. Essentially, and other chemical modifications on the liposome can, like I say, give it the properties which allow it to not only get inside the cell membrane but also then inside the nucleus.